Hello, hey, Senior Citizen Center. <laughs> How are you today? Great, 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 great. My name is Claire Hahn. I am a local girl from North Little Rock, and I am not a speaker. Truly, I'm not. I am a retired nurse that has the funniest stories either happened to them or told to me, and I love to share them. So I'm here to share a couple of really funny stories. And before we get started, you really need to know a little bit more about me. Uh, I am married to the cutest man in the building right now. Can we have a hand for Warren Hall? <laughs> Now, you may notice that we have a May-December romance. Warren Scott is 22 years my senior. That's not all we don't share. We don't share <laughs> eras. We also don't share our thinking. Now, Warren Scott graduated from Duke University the year they invented the inclined plane, is what he likes to tell people. And he, uh, he has an engineering brain. And I'll give you an example of when I realized that the two of us do not think alike. We're driving down the street, and he leans over and he says, Now, honey, I don't know if you're aware that if you start gently pumping your brakes 3.4 tenths of a block behind where you're fixing to stop, you could actually save 4.5 cents per gallon of gas. I realized then we have no uh, perception the same. And I have a couple of stories about perception today. You know, everybody has their own perception. Everybody does. Children do, babies do, seniors do, we all do. And the reason that I found this out was uh, not only being married to an engineer and the engineering thought process, but how many of you have ever tried to potty train? A top. I mean, seriously. I had little Helen, three-year-old Helen, my granddaughter, sitting on the side of the toilet. You know, their little bodies are so tiny, and they're hanging on to the, sh the, the ring around the toilet, the seat, and they're just wibbling and wobbling. And she, we had sang songs, we had told stories. I had told all about everybody's potty training experience in my past history I could think of. And we're sitting there one day and she finally looks at me and she says, Granny, you are so lucky. And I said, I am. And she said, yes, you have the biggest bottom I've ever seen. <laughs> We went to school together. I've known her all my life. Now, Linda was a beauty queen. Linda was even interviewed to be a hee-haw cutie. I'm telling you, it's really prominent. So, she, when she passed away, I felt that it was my calling and my duty to wear something very nice, Maybe a dress. I haven't worn a dress in 10 to 15 years. And I have not worn a girdle since 1967. <laughs> but I went and bought a lovely long dress that I thought would just be perfect. One of those column dresses, you know, summer column dresses. 
So I go in the bedroom and I try on my dress and I'm looking in the mirror and I see a lump here and a bump here and I'm thinking if I could just push this in here and suck this up here and tuck this down here, it would be perfect. Perfect. And then it hit me. Spikes. I have never owned a Spikes. But I decided that I was in honor of Linda, I would go get a Spikes. So I told Warren Scott, I said, we've got to go to Dillard's. He says, well, I don't have a decent belt. And I said, okay, we can get you a belt at Dillard's too. Now, we all know that men are hunters. Women are gatherers, right? Yes, ma'am. We walk in to Dillard's. He goes straight to the belt rack. He looks at the size. He picks it off. He walks and buys it. He's done. He's ready to go. That engineer kicked in. <laughs> then we went over to the spike section. And I talked to the lady at the Spanx and I said, I need a Spanx. And she goes, we don't have any full size women's Spanx at Miss Dillard's. Ooh. And I thought, who needs Spanx? <laughs> size eight? Yeah. Uh, what happened? You don't have full size Spanx? Well, I said, I don't have time. I was losing Warren Scott. He was meandering toward the door. I don't have time. I said, just give me whatever's on the rack. She gave it to me. We go to Nashville. The next morning, we're getting up for the funeral. Warren Scott says, you know, I'm going to take a little nap before we go. He lays down. So I get my spikes out, and I start putting this arm in and this arm in, and I get it up above my head. I pull it about down here, and the thing took on a mind of its own. <laughs> it started rolling, 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 rolling. And it rolled right across the top of my chest under my armpits. And I up like this. I tried to reach down and get it. I tried to move my arm. And all of a sudden, I realized it. Out of breath, and I'm thinking, it's going to be across the front of the Arkansas Democratic Woman strangled by her own spine. So I, I, I said, Lord Scott. He pretended to still be asleep. So I went over and I bumped his bed, and he woke up. He looked up and I said, You've got to he said, I told you that thing would fit a small child. I don't know why you bought it. And then I realized I was not speaking. And he said, what do you want me to do? I said, So he tries with his little hands to try, and he can't do it. He said, what are we to do? I said, you have got to get, use a, 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 a fulcrum, a fulcrum, wedge, wedge. So he looks around, he got his new belt. Oh, he threaded it up <laughs> and Jimmy that thing off the top of his head. As I heard Free Willy, the things <laughs> Engineeringly speaking, you're designed to pull it on from the bottom to the top. <laughs> <laughs> the spikes went in the trash. We went to the memorial, and on the way home, he reached over, patted me on the leg, and said, Honey, some people just aren't engineered to be spiked. <laughs>